Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about the Serial Reader app. This review is entirely unsponsored, it's entirely unprompted. I want to make it very clear that no one who's got anything to do with this app even knows I exist and that's fine. First of all, let me tell you that I'm a pretty equal opportunity reader when it comes to the actual medium of the book. As you can tell from the shelves behind me, I enjoy my books on paper, but I also really like audiobooks. I've had an Audible subscription for many years that I use regularly. I have a Kindle Paperwhite e-reader on which I read ebooks as well. I don't normally read on my phone. That's one way of consuming books that is actually new to me. So I was curious about this app, Serial Reader, which advertises that it feeds you classic literature in daily bite-sized chunks. Let's get the facts out of the way first. This app is available both for Android phones and iPhones. I use it on my Android phone. I have been testing this app for a week now. And so this is my experience. The app is now installing. So let's have a look. See your reader, read classic literature in daily bite-sized bits. It looks kind of cool. Get new issues, everyday ads. Right, so I can select, I guess, when the app tells me to read. Let's say 8 a.m. Okay, um, I'm immediately on the Get Started page, which is pretty cool. I was expecting to have to sign up. Pick your first serial. It's giving me some suggestions here, some of which I know, some of which I don't. There's some really good ones here. I really, The Cantable Ghost by Oscar Wilde is one of my favorite novellas. I'm going to pick something I haven't read before. So let's see if this app is actually going to help me find a book to read. I guess I can go on added recently. And you can see here that every book is split into issues. As the name suggests, I guess they are trying to divide each book into these 20 minute bites. So some of them are really long, like Oliver Goldsmith's The Vicar of Wakefield, which is an 18th century classic. Some of them are quite short, like W.B. Yeats' The Tower. Um, what's most popular? Okay, there's some pretty big names here. Camilla, which is right at the top, I don't know if that means that's the single most popular one, is, I believe, a really early vampire novel, so that's kind of intriguing. Then we've got The Iliad by Homer. We've got some Russian classics. Got Dracula, Wuthering Heights, some Victorian classics, some Jane Austen. So I can also then browse genres. Do I feel like adventure? Yes. Let's see what I get in adventure novels. Okay, we do get adventure novels. Treasure Island, She... Ooh, you know what? Thomas Mallory's uh, Arthurian Tale is actually one that I've also always wanted to read. But I feel like for my very first attempt at using this app, committing to something that's 118 issues long might be a little over the top. So I'm going to pick something shorter. Can't complain about the selections here. There are some very well-known names, but there's also some more obscure ones. The tagline on the Serial Reader website is fairly simple. It states, read classic books in 20 minutes a day, free for iOS and Android. And the way this works is that the app allows you to subscribe to certain works of classic literature, specifically works that are in the public domain, meaning works that are free to access, which generally means works that are 100 years or older. I am not a legal expert. I don't know if there are works in the public domain that are more recent than that, how exactly that works with different countries, etc., etc. But the point is, this app contains only works that are in the public domain. And it splits those works into chunks. I know a book split into chapters, truly groundbreaking, but the chunks are sort of divided up by the amount of time it takes to read them. So they are generally 20 minutes or less in length. And that means that sometimes a chapter is divided up into two or more segments. And then every day the app feeds you one of these chunks and you can read through a classic work of literature that way. All right, I'm going to go for Camilla actually. It's the second time it's popped up now. 
It says a classic Victorian vampire novella predating Dracula by more than 25 years. So it is. I know very little about this book, except that it is about lesbian vampires and it's quite sexy. So what's not to like? It's split into 12 issues. So I suppose I'll be done with it in a week and a half. Let's see what happens when I tap on subscribe. Allow Serial Reader to send you notifications. As much as I detest notifications, I suppose that's kind of the whole point. And there it is. My first issue of Carmilla is ready for me to read. It tells me it's going to take a reading time of nine minutes. So let's tap on it and see if I finish this in nine minutes. Right, so I've got the pages here. It looks all right. I have to say I'm not that keen on the font. So let's see if we can change that to something I find more pleasant to look at. Georgia will do. I'm going to put my glasses on and then read the first issue of Camilla, which means I'm going to pretend read for a bit. I used to do reading vlogs and I always found it a bit awkward to read with the camera on because it just feels very performative. Like I can't focus on the book because I'm constantly thinking about the camera and how I'm looking on the camera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit of performative reading, then I'm going to turn the camera off and then I'm going to actually read the first issue of Camilla. I'm going to be honest, when I first downloaded the app, I did it with some degree of skepticism because I thought, what can this app actually bring me? Someone who frequently and very happily reads classic literature that I can't already do without it. But I have to say I was positively surprised. The subscription model means that every day at the time of your choosing you get a little notification which tells you it's time to read your next section of Camilla. I was basically reading a little bit of Victorian literature with my morning coffee. Now, could I have just picked one of the many books of my TBR and done the same thing? Yes, of course. But there is obviously the factor of convenience of having your phone, which let's be honest, we all have on our person at all times, remind you and give you that piece of literature to read. I was really quite impressed with the browse features. So if you don't quite know what you want to read yet, obviously you can go and search for a specific book that you're after. But if you're not sure, if you just fancy something new, then you can browse their categories, you can browse their lists. Even in the seven days that I tested this app so far, it suggested different topical lists that I thought were interesting. The app contains over 800 works of classic literature, starting from you know, the Greek classics through medieval literature all the way into the early 20th century. I had a little look to see if I could find some more obscure works of literature and some of them I could find, some of them I couldn't. But there is also a suggest a book feature. So if you're after a book that's not in the app, then you can suggest that it's added. Now, I don't know how often the developers of the app check these recommendations and actually go and add new books to the list. But I guess we'll see if Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth is added anytime soon. In terms of actually using the app to read books, I found it very easy and pleasant as an experience. You can select from a limited number of fonts. The visual design of the app is, I don't want to say bare bones, let's say minimalist. It's very clean and unobtrusive and I enjoyed it. It's a fun experience, which is a silly thing to say about reading a book when we are much more used to just picking a book off the shelf. As far as that goes, this app really is nice to use. It's a fun experience reading classics on the phone. In other regards, it's also just a really nice app. And I, I realize I'm using the word nice a lot, but it's such a pleasant surprise when you download an app. And first of all, you're not hit in the face with advertising all over the place. Secondly, it's not asking you to sign up first thing. In fact, you don't have to make an account at all. You can just download it and use it straight away. Thirdly, an app that is genuinely free. That being said, there is a premium version. The premium version costs 
$2.99. It's a one-off payment, so it's not a subscription. If you want to upgrade the app, then you pay that once and you have got the upgraded version. What does the upgraded version give you? Well, things like being able to read ahead. That would be the main draw for me to actually get the premium version. Because if you are on the free version, which I currently am, then you get your 20 minute chunk of book, but you can't skip to the next chunk. If it ends on a cliffhanger, you'll just have to wait until tomorrow. On the other hand, you can read as many books simultaneously as you want. I very optimistically uh, downloaded a Robert Frost collection in the hopes of getting into poetry which I've been trying to do for years and failing at it. In the end, with an app like that, you have to ask yourself, who is this supposed to appeal to? I came to this as someone who reads classics and mostly classics, and my favorite way to consume them has traditionally been paper books and audiobooks. I find with a lot of classics, they improve by re being read out. Serial Reader is not aimed at people like me. It's very much aimed at people who want to read classics, but find them challenging, find them overwhelming, find the idea of reading War and Peace just a little bit too much. But if you split War and Peace into 235 easy daily chunks, then you've read it in like eight months. I genuinely think this app is doing great things to make classics more approachable purely based on the fun way you can browse them, even though I would question some of their classifications, such as having Wuthering Heights in their Valentine's Day list. But it really encourages exploring classics and having fun with classics. You can really let your mood decide which classic you're going to read, which I think is an approach we could all do with taking more when it comes to classics. I said this app was not made for readers like me, but I'm very happy with it. I'm going to continue using it, and I won't be surprised if I'm going to buy the premium version after I've finished Camilla. This app offers a lot for free as well, and it's not obtrusive or pushy or less than a whole app. You get a whole app for free, and if you pay an extra $3, you get a little bit more on top of that as well. One thing I would have liked to see in the app that I didn't would be an opportunity to browse these books, not just by genre, but also by publication year. Because sometimes I'm not so much craving a horror novel or a thriller, but I'm craving something from the 1810s or an Edwardian book or something along those lines. So browsing by date, published and also possibly by language or nationality of the author would be a fun addition to the browse features of the app. Even though the app says that it gets you to read 20 minutes of classics a day, all of the issues, as they call the chunks that they split the books into, of Camilla so far have been a lot shorter than that, ranging between 9 and 15 minutes. It's a sort of low-level commitment that I think any reader can make. You will always have 10, 15, 20 minutes in your day to read a bit of a classic. It requires very low commitment from the reader for a very high payoff, which is that at the end, you've read a book that you probably wouldn't have read otherwise. In particular, because a lot of the books that are in there are obscure books that you won't easily find in a bookshop. I had a little look to see how obscure I could go and there were some titles I would have expected to be in this list that weren't and there were some really really obscure books that were. It's not really that much of a downside because as I understand it more and more books are being added to the app and sooner or later, the one that you're after is going to be on there as well, if it isn't yet. So I'm actually surprised by how positive my experience has been with this app, just based on prior experiences with reading apps that have not been fantastic. I genuinely think if you have a smartphone and you're even slightly interested in reading classics, to try out the Serial Reader app, I'm going to link it in the description box, obviously. There is literally no cost there is literally no downside to having a go. And perhaps it'll help you read classics that you otherwise wouldn't pick up. And as you know, on this channel, we're all about making classics more accessible, more approachable, less scary and more fun.
With that said, thank you so much for watching. Bye.